Hey, hey, what's up? Welcome back to the party talk pot. Wait, yeah, we're hanging out with Tomas Barraza. Some of y'all know him because you've had him at your school speaking. For those of you who don't, this is the co founder of Vibe 18. Come on, we, we are in uh, this amazing Airbnb out in Arkansas, Harrison, Arkansas, right now. Yep, yep. Yeah. And I'm with some presentations today. Gonna do some more tomorrow. Oh, yeah. Ha had a ton of fun earlier today. About to do it all over again. Yeah. <laughs> but we wanted to take some time. Uh, it's awesome when we get to travel together because we can work on some content for you. And Tomas is an expert videographer. He's also expert in prevention. So I was like, hey, let's combine the two. Let's give some value and see if we can teach people a few things yeah. on how to use media better, more better. Yeah. Let's use media more better. The most best that we can. <laughs> awesome. So just starting off, Tomas, um, let's start a little bit just like how you got involved in the prevention field yeah. and why you're passionate about it. Yeah, for sure. So I, I got started in prevention, gosh, way back in 2013. Um, it really started youth development because when I, I started working at a group home agency, and so, you know, working with those boys at the group home that I worked at, um, that that's what really got me started in like, you know, how to uh, really encourage these boys. Some of them were in there for things that their parents had done. Um, others were in there for things for reasons and choices that they themselves made. So, okay. you know, with all of that, it really um, encouraged me to look back at my life, because if I'm being honest with you. A lot of the things I was asking them to do, I was really hypocritical myself, you know, and, and uh, it was things that I was dealing with in, in my life as a teenager, especially, um, you know, so yeah, it was, it was really interesting just like knowing God was calling me to, to bring these skeletons out of my closet that I was hoping and praying that no one would find out and start sharing it with these boys. Mm -hmm. So that was like the start of me taking that story of all of the bad decisions that I made and starting to share it with them as a way to help them understand, like, I get you. I know why you're feeling that way. Well, I think what's helpful is because, right, there's there's a lot of clinicians who will come in and talk to these students mm -hmm. and the students shut down because they're like, you don't get me. You're not where I'm from. You yeah. don't know what I've been through. Mm -hmm. And because you were vulnerable and you yeah. get in a situation, like they actually listen to you. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, that, that was that was huge. I, and I would see that they have they, they they had like so many resources surrounding them with therapists and so on and so forth. But they always chalked it up as like, that'll that'll get me. They've never been through it. They just read a book and, you know, and, and, and so when I started sharing that, they really felt like, OK, this guy really does understand. And I was able to help them to bridge the gap as someone that understands and someone that wished that they would lean into those therapists or those counselors at school, those advisors, that coach, whatever have you, so that uh, to, so I could have gotten the help beforehand, before you know it led to uh, me doing my own like type of dirt. <laughs> yeah, yeah, dude. Well, that's that's such a great example of the spectrum. And when we think about prevention and even leaning into diversion yeah. and then recovery is like we need everybody and their story and their passion mm -hmm. because there's no there's no one fix right it's like right. we need you in your story mm -hmm. we need me in mine we need you the listener and your yeah. story because we all fit this we all fit this opportunity mm. i'll say and there's no possible way that one of us can get it done ourselves like we have to work together so you could be an advocate for them to go like, all right, we'll give counseling a chance. Yeah. Give the therapist a shot because they are smart. And I wish that I had one. Like, you right. can vouch for them. Right. That's really important. Um, what would you say if you had to choose just one thing? Um, like, your why? Because you're still doing this. It's 10 years later. Yeah. You have a thriving video business and you still take time to give back and to be helping students. Why are you still doing this work? Yeah. I know, you know, it really is just just part of my purpose, what God has graced me to do. Like, you know, he he uh, I, it, it was really, really obvious to me on the back end. Like when I started 
uh, like I said, like taking those skeletons out the closet and started sharing it with these boys that everything that I had gone through, the mess that was my life, wasn't just for no reason. It was to serve as a message for others that are going through the same things that I went through or something similar to what I was going through as a kid. And so, um, yeah, like that, I know that that's, you know, part of the purpose and, and the grace that God has given me. And so I, I'm just, you know, just wanting to really be, um, a resource, you know, a bridge to for these, for these kids, for these teenagers. Yeah. That's awesome, man. And you're a servant, like you over deliver every time that we go on the road and we do stuff with students, like I can count on it that we're going to be staying after to talk with students, to chat it up with them, make them feel heard, share stories, listen to their stories. And that's where like, (laughs) there's no diva with you, you know, like you're not asking for anything. You're just there to give, 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 Mm. uh, which I think is cool. Well, and and that's oftentimes like one of the, one of the best parts, right. Is being able to really, really connect with students, uh, during our presentations, like we're really mindful to not just make, not just have it a monologue, but actually a dialogue, you know what I'm saying? Uh, but there's only so much that you can do. It's a presentation after all, you know? So, uh, being able to have those one-on-one conversations, I mean, it's, it's, it's great. great. Yeah. That's one of my favorites too, is like when our plane doesn't leave for a few hours, you know, Mm -hmm. and it's like, no, I'll hop in gym class. Let's play or yeah. let's go to the lunch, yeah. hang out. Uh, yeah. Because then you get those moments. Right. Yeah. With students and big time. It's that two way thing. Um, yeah. I want to jump into a little bit of um, video. Yeah. Before that, though, how did you, I mean, you're in this prevention world for 10 years. Mm-hmm. How did video enter the picture? Because I know now you're incredible at it, but. Mm. I've seen it from when like you, like you had your first camera, right? Yeah. When we had a few years before we met and you were kind of tinkering around with it. You were learning it. Yeah. Lessons, watching YouTube videos. Mm -hmm. Um, How, how'd you get into it and to become for what it is today? Yeah. I, like I said, you know, I knew how important the message was to get out. So I knew that I needed to learn that medium of releasing that message out into the world, you know, via YouTube and social media and all the things. Right. So I knew like I had got my first camera, thanks to a buddy of mine who I was just like hounding with questions about (laughs) photo and video. And so finally he was just like, bro, you asked enough questions. Here's, here's my old camera, like start putting it into practice. And so, uh, yeah, it gifted me that camera. And I mean, that I, that's what I started on was, you know, this, this, Canon Rebel T2i, you know what I'm saying? And so um, that's what I start, got started on and just learned the skill set on. Um, few, that, that was in 2015 that I got a camera. Fast forward four years, 2019, you know, I was creating content here and there, continuing to, to you know, establish um, a personal brand as a speaker and whatnot. And um, also, you know, making content for for organizations that I was serving with and all of that good stuff right but I started serving at, at the church and I remember to me I'm like right, I'm gonna I'm gonna serve in the youth ministry because that's what I've been doing you know I've been doing this since 2013 like of course that's what makes most sense but honestly like God just came and was like hold on now let Giovanni have his own experience who Giovanni is my son for those of you who don't know uh, you know, he's like, let Giovanni have his own experience. Go serve somewhere else. Hmm. And I'm thinking to myself, like, where else would I serve? And that's when he put the video team on my heart. And so I was like, man, God, but I'm a hobbyist at best. There's no way that I have something to add to the video team at church. But out of obedience, I was just like, all right, if that's what you said, let's go ahead and make, let's go ahead and do it. You know, and so um, I did that within a couple of weeks of of. Hopping on board, it was November 2019. A couple weeks later, uh, you know, I ended up getting this whole strategy that, you know, was just literally dropped on me by God. Like, it was not me by any means. I took, I had this realization and I took it to an organization that I was, I was serving with, right? And I was just like, hey, okay, we are killing it on the physical stage. Mm-hmm. But to be honest, or, yeah, we're killing it on the physical stage, 
but we suck on the digital stage. <laughs> like we need to build up content. And I, I, I said, yeah, I don't have been. That's how much of us listening yes. to this podcast. Yeah. Yeah, like if that's you, if that's you and your organization, if you have a coalition and that's you, uh, listen, listen up. This is gonna be great. Get it. <laughs> I get it. You know, we all had these great missions that we're doing on a regular basis, day in and day out. Mm-hmm. You know, we're killing it there, but it, it's like we can we can amplify our reach, amplify our message when we can build up the digital platform as well. Yeah. And so that's exactly how I was I said, hey, I know I've been creating here and there, but I'm gonna start doing it more mindfully now that I'm I'm really growing in this area. Mm-hmm. And so in no time later, I ended up uh, making the first video after that conversation. I showed it to her, the CEO of this organization. Mm-hmm. She was in tears, mm-hmm. in tears. She's like, Tomas, I'm about to walk into a meeting right now, but will you send me that video? So I send it to her, she shows that person, and that she ends up walking out of that meeting. That person was so moved that they wrote a twenty thousand dollar check right there on the spot. For what? Yes, yes. And that's when I was like, "All right, cool. All right, God, you got my attention now. Like, what do you want me to do with this?" Whoa! For them to be so moved in that moment, you know what I mean? And so, and this was a nonprofit. You've been yes. around, right? Like you've seen their work. Nothing like that had happened before, but you put together things like that would happen, but it's like, you know, brand funds, boom, you know, yes. or, or like big gala. And so boom, okay. people are like, really, but on a, this was a, someone moved. This was on a Monday. You know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> this, long <laughs> you a daddy, yeah. you're like, you give it something that can move them that much to say like, oh yes, you don't need to bring me to the gala. You don't need to do this grant. Like yeah. I am so moved by what you're doing. Shown from a video, yeah, I feel good enough that I will commit to writing this check, like literally on the spot. Too. Exactly. Oh my goodness. Exactly. Wow. So that was like December 2019. You fast forward a few months. I'm continuing to build up the skill set, but a few months later, pandemic hits, and so everywhere is shutting their doors. Hmm. Because of this skill set, though, of of you know creating content, getting better at video. We ended up taking all programs online in a matter of days, not even a week later. Wow. And because of that, we were able to, like, you fast forward six months, that organization ends up tripling in its revenue. And it's like, oh. because we were able to pivot so quickly with this skill set. So I was just like, all right, I'm continuing to pray about it. Like, God, oh, what do you want me to do with this? You know, I love prevention. I love speaking. I love doing what I'm doing. But obviously you're doing something over here as well. And so, you know, as, as my wife and I continue to pray about it, you know, it was like, no doubt he was wanting me to step off the stage for a season Mm -hmm. and step behind the camera to help other people to elevate their brand and their message as well. And so, uh, November one of 2020, excuse me. Yeah. November one of 2020, an exact year after I began serving on the video team, that's when we launched full time with Moss Creative. Yeah, and uh, that that's the video and content strategy company that that we run, and it's just been yeah, dang, rocking and rolling. Okay, I want to highlight something because this is so applicable to everyone listening here. You're like, if you're listening, you probably work for a school, you work for a drug prevention coalition, or an organization that serves youth, mm-hmm. and you're probably a nonprofit. And I'm listening to this this case of you using video. Not only one, to help raise funds, but two, to bring them into the digital world, like Mm. for their systems, for how they deliver messages. Yeah. And so it's more scalable, like it's easier to share what you do and it's helping you with funding. And I do want to highlight this because if you're not leveraging video and media well, you're probably leaving funding on the table, not only from these donors that have money and they want to invest in these things they just don't know what you do or they yeah. can't see it or picture it so you haven't shown them mm-hmm. but also because how powerful is a video to be able to submit for your grant and to show what you've done because you know if you show that you're doing great things with people's money they give you more money mm-hmm. you know you get accepted for that next one and i mean is it a 12 pair like 12 page essay going to say as much as this video does right i don't think so yeah um, because an essay you leave it to the reader to read it in the tone that 
they read it in and you're hoping that they read it in your tone that you wrote it in. Yeah. Whereas video, there's no doubt. Like you can see, like this video can be muted right now. And you can just be seeing our facial expressions and already get an idea of what exactly is going on. The, yeah. The, you know, the theme of it, the, the the temperature of our conversation, you know what I mean? Like, is this a, yeah, like the all the things, so. Dang, okay, that's cool. And the, the fact that you can, I mean, you can use video for anything too, because I've seen your stuff too. Like, you bring in numbers, right? Like, data is important and metrics are important. So you bring in that stuff into the video. You can talk about those things, but it's just so dynamic. The future is video because we have so much access to it. Yeah. Um, so let's dive in. Um, I know you can't teach us <laughs> your, what, 2015 to now, your eight years of experience in video in, you know, 20 minutes. But yeah, is there a couple, let's start with some common mistakes that you yeah. see people making that is just like an easy fix. Like, yeah. let's help us not make these mistakes anymore. Uh, what are some of those things that we can avoid? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, let's get into that. I, I, I want to give you four. Four really, really common big mistakes that easily, easily you can fix. Okay. First one, you got your phone, right? Everyone, for the most part, has a smartphone with really, really great quality cameras. Mm. But what tanks the quality right off the bat is that they typically, the lenses, have a bunch of fingerprints on them. <laughs> you know, not all those smudges, like, in literally, in that, yours, mine, that flesh, don't look, when is the last fire? <laughs> oh my God. Dude, shut up. There you <laughs> go. So, so mess up, well, you, like, even on your shirt, whatever it is that you're wearing, like, just clean that lens before you're taking a photo before you're taking video okay just clean the lens so you don't have to carry around like a special rag like you just literally just take the time before you shoot it to to wipe it off on a clean shirt or whatever yes. yeah as long as it's not like sandpaper you're fine <laughs> <laughs> okay yeah all right so that's, that. that's like that one of the biggest ones like you do that boom you're already ahead of the game big time let's see another one is a lot of times people do this. They they want to, when they're setting up the settings on their phone, they want to save space. So they put it on one of the lower quality settings, mm -hmm. right? I get it. I get it. But one of the best things that we can do is take advantage of the good quality of the camera that we have by maxing out the settings um, to 4K and, you know, and, and either 24 or 30 frames per second if it's just you talking. Now, if you're like... A little bonus if you're wanting to slow it down while you're editing it. If you try to do that with like a 24 frame per second video, then it's just going to be all choppy. You know what I mean? Like it's going to look okay. all choppy. What you want to do is use a higher frame work rate. And that's where you see like 4K 60. That is able to be, you know, um, slowed down up to 50% at, at least. Yeah. Okay. Um, Hit me on like a third grade level if you had to explain like, Okay, so far you said 4K, mm -hmm. which I understand as like there's 4,000 little dots, like pixels within the picture. Yeah. Uh, is that right? I know. That. I know. It, it's, it's like this. The best way to explain that is digi digitally, if you were to think of a canvas, right? A digital canvas, that is. Okay. HD is 1080 pixels by 1920, right? Okay. 1080 by 1920 across. Okay. 4K is essentially double that. Oh. Right? So what is that? 3860 across by 24, I don't know, something like that. I forget. Okay. But yeah. And so that's essentially by, by 21, 2160 by 3840. Okay. And it helps you to have a better picture so that number one, it's clearer. Mm -hmm. But two, that if you need to like blow it up into a bigger frame it's not going to look all pixely and weird exactly it's going to look clear even at a bigger screen yeah exactly okay. and then the frames per second mm -hmm. the, the fps you said um yeah so with third grade level that essentially like you think about in a second there's 24 photos that's what makes up a video 24 photos that are being taken and that's what shared we're uh, we're used to seeing 24 frames per second right okay. that's what we automatically see with our eyes Ah. Now, if you were to do a higher frame rate, like 60 frames per second, that that gives you 60 pictures 
to slow down and create and and take 24 of those for the 24 frame per second. So because of that slow motion looks really good. The slow motion looks so crisp, so clean instead of it being choppy because it has all of those frames to work with. Does that all make sense? Yeah. And I've seen you do this stuff. So when you were filming our our capital day that mm-hmm. you emceed, we were doing some activities yeah. to make it fun. That was fun. It was so good, man. Yeah, by the way, if you're watching, you killed it as an MC there. Yeah, show was Zayana. That was so fun. Yes. Uh, from the Heel Coalition in Arizona and Phoenix. Oh, yeah. Um so what was sweet is we had these we were showing activities and how fun they were. Yeah. And you slowed it down like and we got to see the emotion on the laughter on their faces, like how fun it is and the ga- like goofy games and them meeting each other. Yeah. And so you were able to do that because you had the settings on your camera or on your phone, which anyone can do if your phone allows you to. It's just a simple setting. Yeah. And so they can do that. So you can bring out some of that emotion and you like listening, you probably know the most powerful moments in these these movies ad- yeah. that we watch, oftentimes they slow it down oh, yeah. and it makes it more emotional. Mm-hmm. And they, like the music obviously helps too. Totally. Uh, but it's like a tool in your toolbox that if you shoot it in that and give it to your video editor, they're going to have a lot of freedom to make an incredible video then. Yeah, big time. Mm. Big, okay. big time, big time. Awesome. Yeah. Um. What else? Ooh. Another one. <laughs> Another one. So another thing that people, another really big mistake that people make is not being aware of the lighting, right? Mm. So oftentimes what I end up seeing is like they have a big lighting source, like a window in back of them, which creates shadow. It's almost like they're just the silhouette is what Mm. it it looks like. So what we want to do is we want to be mindful of the lights that we have to work with or the lighting sources and use those to our advantage. So if we have, if our only lighting source is a window, then cool, let's stand, let's uh, sit, stand and facing the window in front of it. That way it is, you know, being shown on our face. Okay. Yeah. That's, that's good. That's like a huge, huge one too. A little bonus one is like, you know, if you're filming outside, you can film in the sh- in like a shadow, if you will, like you standing in a shadow or your subject, whoever you're filming is standing in a shadow and it's like bonus if you can also make the background be in a shadow which is kind of tough but yeah. if you could do that it looks really really well uh nice okay but on the opposite side though if you don't then one's gonna be super blown out and bright yeah where you can hardly even see it and the other one is gonna be nicely you know if the if the subject is nice the background might be super blown out or vice versa. You know what I mean? Okay. But a subject might be super blown out, but the background looks like clean, you know? <laughs> so yeah, if you do have to choose one over the other, choose the subject. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's good. And I like that tip of like, if I'm shooting a video, I can go to my window cause I know it's a good light source. Yeah. A lamp. If you have like a lamp, yeah. uh, a lamp shade, like a lamp with a shade around it too. Like that way it diffuses. Okay. The light a little bit too. Yeah. Um, if it's a cloudy day out, that's natural diffusion all day, okay. which means that there's just not harsh shadows. And well, yeah, because I have these deep eyebrows. I get those shadows. Yeah, Jake always asks, hey, how do my eyes look whenever we're on stage? Is there, are, there, are there any uh, shadows on my eyes? He's like, yeah, I'll wait every time. <laughs> every time, bro. <laughs> I'm still there. Right? I know. I need like a light right in front of my face that's just going to light up my eye socket. Yeah, yeah. These caves. <laughs> All right, so we've got the clean your lens. Yeah, I can do that with my shirt. Um, put on some high quality settings on my phone. Awesome, I can do that going into my settings. Um, and then make sure the light in front of you is brighter than the light behind you. Yeah. So that the subject of the video is being lit up. Oh, yeah. You got one last one for us? One last one. One last mistake that I see people doing. They give a lot of really, really great information but they do not have a call to action. Ooh, ouch. So then it's like, all right, mm-hmm. I've got this cool information, but I don't know what to do with it. We want to make it super simple for them and just make that decision, give them a clear call to action for them. That way they don't have to try to figure it out on their own. They understand, ah, this is what I need to do next. Dude, and just want to missed opportunity mm-hmm. if you go through all this effort to put together this content and then it's it's kind of like buying the most expensive 
yacht you could find and then you never take it out on the water right <laughs> like you're gonna do all this stuff save up all this money buy this incredible yacht i'm not gonna use it though right right yeah. Point, yeah. so is it to make it easy maybe what are some things like is there simple phrases we can use or is it just giving people such direct action yeah like go here do this um is it it's pretty yeah it's simple honestly it really just just comes back to um the why you're creating it as long as you understand the why so if it's to inform people like uh, oftentimes when we're sharing um a message is to inform them about something but do we want to only inform one person or do we want them also because we know that part of prevention is you know uh being able to educate educate ourselves as a as a community right so if i know this well that's great for me but what about other families that my kid's gonna be around you know what about other people that we interact with and whatnot so we want them to know as well so if we're sharing information well the call to action is share this with someone that you love and care about right yeah. that it's as simple as that wow yeah okay that's good and if it's something further if you're doing advocacy and there's a bill on the line mm -hmm. it's like hey go to this website yeah. or use this a letter to write to your senator or something like that yeah that's really good or even like you know some of the deliverables are like you know wanting to measure what people got out of certain messages or cer certain you know whether it's presentations or you know curriculum and so on and so forth so you can ask some of those questions hey if you're posting it on social media comment below if you were surprised by one of these or you know what is something that you what are your thoughts behind this you know it's, yeah. that's a call to action that you can utilize right and it drives engagement too though because the algorithm loves pushing social media posts and content that yep. gets engagement like exact likes comments um shares yeah like that saves all that ah yeah okay that's good um then we we talked about some common mistakes you actually gave us some good easy solutions do you have any other tips that you would give people um just in general i think um okay here's here's one really big tip whenever we are creating content and matter of fact if you've ever like filmed a video before or filmed someone once that record button is hit it's like a deer in headlights <laughs> right like you're like oh i like don't know what to do don't know what's like, what are words you know what are, like, what are your like, words 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 and more words right like it just gets so awkward mm -hmm. and oftentimes it's because it's a mindset shift that needs to happen mm. and part of that mindset shift is, is we might be sitting in the standing in front of this camera right and we think oh it's a camera it's this inanimate object when in reality it's a tool that's getting it to a person so if we can think of this as a person that we are talking to now that shifts the way that we are delivering the message so i always like to tell people imagine imagine that this that you're talking to is your best friend and just like your best friend they hype you up right they're like you know, you guys see Jake and he's like head nod and he'll start like <laughs> smiling and all that, right? Like when I'm saying something, like that's what, what friends do is they're like, what? Oh, no way. Tell me what? And like, <laughs> so you're on the mat. I'm literally like imagining as though someone, even though I might be in the room by myself while I'm recording, even though you might be in the room by yourself recording, you can imagine people responding. You're pausing. You're letting it sink in. Their eyebrows are going up. Their eyes are getting big. Yeah. Their their eyebrows are kind of, you know, making that that little like, oh my God, are you serious? All of those different things are happening. So you can imagine it and that gives you the, the it, it helps you to embody what it is that you're saying. So I think that's mm -hmm. like yeah. a huge, huge tip. It's a mindset shift. Yeah, I've seen you do that. So I've seen him do this on... Uh, whenever we're doing work to interview students that are at schools, like we'll do an assembly and then we'll interview students to create social media content for you. And I was like kind of wondering, like, how are you making them so comfortable? Because my experience has been the deer in the headlights yeah. of like, dude, they get so terrified once you put that microphone on them and the light goes on that the camera is on. It's like, uh, yeah, just like you said, but you had something that you would get them comfortable. So that's a super tip. Like mm -hmm. pretend it's a person and 
I've seen you do that, and it worked. Yeah, not just the person, like your best friend. Oh, okay. But as we made earlier, pretend is your best friend. And I'd see where. Or some of them, if they, if they get back into, like, robotic and all of that, then then I'm like, all right, what's your best friend's name? You know what? Who are they? Like, let's think about that person, literally, because it helps. It helps big time. That's yeah. big. And especially, like, if especially if it's a, a teenager creating content for their peers, you want it to be said in their language. Ooh, yeah, you know that's good. You don't want it to be robotic or oh, fake or scripted. Exactly, yeah. exactly. You want them to use their vernacular that they would be chopping it up with their friends using. Yeah. You know, so otherwise they're gonna be like, "That's fake. That's not. That's not Kelly. That's mm-hmm. not the way she talks. Why? Why is they pushing this video where she's acting all fake? Yeah, yeah, that's Big good. Big time. That's good. I think another tip is. Um, yeah, even just the positioning of the camera lens. You know, sometimes it's like, like I, I see some people doing it way up here or they have it down here because they feel a little awkward, you know, and so they're doing it. <laughs> yeah. They don't want anyone to see that they're recording, you know. <laughs> and so, but the best thing that we can do is keep the camera lens eye level. Eye level. Because uh, f- there's there's so many different points of, of from a psychological perspective that, you know, depending on like what we're doing with the camera... It hits on if you if you study film if you study like movies and whatnot they do certain things to evoke an emotion right and so whenever whenever you want someone to feel powerless the camera is up high they're being uh-huh. overpowered by the camera right by by the positioning of the camera okay the, cool. the same thing on the on uh, the opposite side you know if if they uh, if the camera is low then it's like they're you're overpowering them the person that you're speaking to so you just want it to be hey we're on the same level that's essentially like you know what we're trying to do with prevention as well it works really really well when we can get on the same level that's what we hear all the time with students is like right man you guys don't talk down to us and that it just it just feels so good it makes me so much more open just to what you have to say so we're doing that even virtually as well you know yeah that's good okay we can do that keeping the camera on the eye level Mm -hmm. which might mean um grab a tripod yeah like that's keep the camera steady you don't have to worry about holding it steady or anything and you can set it to that eye level yeah exactly exactly uh last tip yeah last tip last tip is some for like have some formulas available for you so by formula, there's a couple that I'll share with you. One of them is the HIC formula, which stands for hook, insight, call to action. When you're creating content, you want to hook them in. It can be a statement. It can be a quick story. Hook them in really, really quick, though. You got literally three seconds for it to be something engaging. Yeah. You know, So hook them in impart that piece of wisdom that insight that you want them to really walk away with with and then because you already know you have your call to action yep. you're telling them they, they don't have to guess what to do next you're telling them what to do next okay. so that makes it much more easy and simple for them to follow so hook insight call to action mm. the other one is the ada formula that's a i d a and it stands for attention Interest has. Do you remember what the D is? Deliver? No. No. La- Go on, bro. Directional. <laughs> I, I, deer in headlights. Deer in <laughs> uh, headlights. Something important, probably. Yes. Desire. Desire. Ah, okay. Yeah. So you're wanting to know, you got to know their desire that they want, right? Ah, okay. And then action, which call to action. Okay. You know, so you grab their attention, right? You, you, uh, which is kind of like the hook. Yeah. Totally, okay. totally like the hook. attention. Cause anytime that you grab their attention, literally, especially if you're, if you're posting on social media, the, you have so much that you're like battling with for attention. Yeah. So you want to make sure, all right, I'm going to say, I'm going to, you know, as I post this, I want to make it scroll stopping. I don't want them to continue with the scroll and they're like, oh, yeah, like, that's, is that why like people are moving their hands and like going close to the screen? That's exactly. Or like the first part of the, 
a preview is like the most dramatic scene of the entire movie or the most dramatic uh, yeah. fight. Yeah. The reality TV show is like, boom, the first five seconds. You said monster. Oh, oh you right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. You, you think about it, right? You're in the movie theater. It's like so many pictures. And then all of a sudden, like someone comes through and you're like, wait, what the heck just happened? Like it hooked you in. It grabbed your attention. And in the same way, like you, you could totally do that as well. Um, so grab attention, mm -hmm. right? Interest. Interest, desire, and action. Cool. Oh, dang. All right, well, the consistent part, too, is like the hook and the action. Call it. it always starts with the hook. It always ends with the action. And in the middle, you got to keep them and give them something good. Like, yes. fulfill your promise from your hook. Yes. Right? Oh, yeah. And then give them something. Okay, that's good. I definitely want to end because I don't think... We wouldn't be serving our audience if we didn't share the incredible package mm. that we are we have launched and is like crazy awesome. Like our yeah. clients are raving about this, uh, and like we're getting so many inquiries about it. Totally, totally. Um, so tell them how we're helping coalitions with their media and their yeah. social media because I can guarantee you, people listening to this are like, listen, I'm a coalition leader, which means I'm a professional fundraiser, right. I'm a volunteer coordinator, I'm an executive director, maybe. <laughs> and, <laughs> like, and now you got me doing social media? All the things. All the things. Yeah. Hats off to you, seriously. Yeah. My lord. <laughs> uh, how can we help? But yeah, so we, we saw that problem big time, you know, just like needing to like really utilize content to share like the messaging and all of that the good works that you're doing and continuing to all the things and so what we realize is we have this skill set <laughs> and not only that like our clients are bringing us in to go and and our, our partners you know bringing us in to speak to their students why not just bring all of the gear and interview their students like, we already built a connection with them why not just continue to capture the content with them for them and so that's what we started to do yeah. is we started capturing content and delivering literally a year's worth of content to post in one day even the same day that we go and speak yes oh and this is okay this is incredible because i watched this come into fruition from idea all the way to implementation and now it's taking off because your jaw probably dropped when you hear like this is the reaction we get a year's worth of social co media content featuring your students. Yours. To influence your students. Like yours. <laughs> that, is, that is ideal. So you, yeah. you do that for me. And then what I loved is so when we first launched this, we were in Kentucky and we probably interviewed maybe five to 10 students. Yep. Shout out to Ly Lyon County. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> <I've heard. laughs> you can get <never> any <laughs> That's right. And they're, they were awesome, right? So they had a, Okay. They had identified some students that could, uh, you know, speak. Yeah. And could talk on camera. They were all comfortable, but like you used your strategies and yeah. make people comfortable. And you would get them not only telling their personal stories, their personal opinions and beliefs. They were using their language. Yep. But then also what was really cool is you gave them um, different prompts yeah. and like current events and statistics about fentanyl, about opioids, about marijuana. So they could actually get the message and bring it out to their friends yeah. in a casual, like youthful way that only they can do. Mm -hmm. uh, and that led to, right, this this database of posts and videos yeah. that are engaging. And then my favorite part is you sent you sent a video to Nancy mm -hmm. with like, here's exactly how you can post it to get the most views. Here's exactly what buttons to press on Instagram, yeah. uh, like to use all the tools. So there was the guesswork was taken out of it. Totally. It was literally an entire system to take care of your social media for a year. Come on. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> it was awesome. And I yeah. think that's why people are like, yes, please. I want that too. Yes, please. I want that too. Mm -hmm. And when you're out here speaking, let's double the impact. Yeah. That's probably moderate or like mild to say, just double the <laughs> impact, but right. like really scale the impact because we can build that online stage that you talked about mm -hmm. as well in the beginning. Yeah. Yeah. It's huge, honestly. Like, and I, I, I really thought that, you know, it was the mo majority of the time so far has been when we are out speaking, but it's going to blow my mind that there's some that are like, we'd love to have you speak of yes, but that's the biggest problem that we have to face right now. And so even people just a la carte, like we really want the media package because we have 
all these things coming up that we need to promote. You know, we have our youth summit that's coming up. We have all of these messages and PSAs that we've got to get out because we have the funding to do exactly that. We got the funding for our website, but we need all of this content for our website. And so, yeah, that's been amazing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's been so cool. So you'll be going to New Mexico soon to do yep. that. Mm -hmm. And then I know we're going to Louisiana yeah. for some work with that. That's the speaking and the media package. So it really is just kind of like tailored to what they need. Mm -hmm. um, I just, yeah. Dude, it's great work. I love seeing the videos, like Man. featuring these young people yeah. doing the work that we all are like trying to encourage them to do. Now we just have to make it easier for them, right? Mm -hmm. Like if you're not trained on it, then it's going to introduce barriers. But lucky for us, Tomas is trained on it. <laughs> so it removes all those barriers, Big time. gives it to us in an easy to use package. Um, so all that to say, if you are listening to this, you're involved in prevention and you're like, hey, how do I do social media? How do we get youth involved in social media? Uh, we can do a training for your students. Yeah. And we can also just deliver the entire thing for you mm -hmm. um, because we've got the infrastructure, the systems, and this guy, the knowledge to yeah. pull it off. Yeah, so. exactly. So train your students or done for you, mm -hmm. whichever one you choose. Like, it's just incredible. Incredible. Yeah. All right, so we're going to leave you with this. you got some easy-to-use uh, mistakes and solutions, right? Um, clean your lens. <laughs> Force your video. Do it. Uh, use your settings to set up your camera so you can shoot high-quality stuff. Um, it was the frames per second. Yeah. High number. And hey, I'll, I'll give you this. Like, If you're like, oh, I don't settings on my phone, like, hit us up. Send yeah. us an email. I will walk you through it. Seriously. Like, Dude, let's, I love we'll, that. we'll get some on the calendar and I'll just walk you through it. Yeah. But awesome. bring for per second and 4K, you know, 4, 4K and 24 or 4K at 30. Yes. Oh, that's perfect, man. I love that you said that too. Hit us up. We'll get you that. Um, put the lighting source in front of your face or your subject instead of behind us. And then having a clear call to actions. Um, you mentioned three tips as well. Mm -hmm. uh, pretend you're talking to your best friend. I love what you said. Imagine yeah. you're talking to your best friend. They're hyping you up. That's the camera. Then you can ask them the question. Yes. That's good. Yeah. Um, keeping the camera eye level. So having that tripod or whatever you use. And then you gave us those formulas that all started with that hook. Mm -hmm. uh, that first like kind of capture and then ended with the call to action in the middle. It was keeping their interest Yep. Uh, exactly. with those formula, the hick and the ADA formulas. Uh, and then I'm glad we got a chance to share about the media package. Yeah. Yeah. Whew. This so, is a good episode. Come on. <laughs> come on. Y'all, uh, if you are interested in any of that, uh, seriously, we would love to just come and, and hang out with you, hang out with your students, and just pour into all of what we've you know, been able to do with Vibe 18. You know, show them how they can fit in, make friends, and have fun without sacrificing their health. Health, and and not only that, like be a huge part of changing policy, be a huge part of of you know giving PSAs and all of that good stuff. So yeah, yeah. Hey, if someone hasn't told you in a little bit, thank you so much for the work that you're doing. Mm -hmm. We're so excited to be on the same team with you, changing yes. the world together. We cannot do it alone. So to do this together. I don't, makes not only just our jobs really fun, but our lives really fulfilling. Yeah. So we will see you on the next episode of Party Talk, where we empower leaders in youth drug prevention. Yeah. Have a good one. Peace. <laughs>